Lots going on here. Seems like every day. So I want to drill down in an area where most people are not going to drill down or may not be able to. And that is a court hearing today in Washington, D.C., in front of a three-judge panel of the District of Columbia Circuit Court, the Appeals Court. That court was expanded by Obama and Harry Reid, as you know, if you listen to this program. They added more seats, and they filled them with radical Obama Democrats. And so they control that court. And the issue before the court is whether a former president has immunity from prosecution for decisions, even thoughts, as it were, that he had as president of the United States. Hmm. Now, we wouldn't be in this position if this farcical prosecution hadn't taken place in the first place. With the Klan Act and the Enron Act and the Federal Contractor Act having nothing to do with January 6th, violence, sedition, or insurrection. So the Democrat Party, the Biden administration, and rogue Jack Smith have dragged us to this point. Have dragged us to this point. So if you cannot indict a sitting president, you can wait in the weeds, you can wait in the shadows. And indict that president after the fact, that is, once they're retired or they're defeated, once they're out of office, That's the question. Now you can see what kind of disastrous consequences that can have. You would think that Barack Obama and his ilk, his fellow Marxists, would understand this. You would think that judges on the court would understand this. But they're result-oriented, and Donald Trump is Hitler, you know, so they have to deal with it. I want to remind people that the American Criminal Liberties Union, back in 2010, condemned Barack Milhouse Benito Obama. What did they condemn him? In a press release, they wrote, the Obama administration today argued before a federal court that it should have unreviewable authority to kill Americans. The executive branch has unilaterally determined to pose a threat. Government lawyers made that claim in response to a lawsuit, says the ACLU, by the ACLU and the Center for Constitutional Rights, charging that the administration asserted targeted killing authority violates the Constitution and international law. The U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia heard arguments on both sides. Not only does the administration claim to have sweeping power to target and kill U.S. citizens anywhere in the world, But it makes the extraordinary claim that the court has no role in reviewing that power or the legal standards that apply. Said CCR staff attorney Pardris Cabre, who presented arguments in the case, the Supreme Court has repeatedly rejected the government's claim to an unchecked system of global detention. And the district court should similarly reject the administration's claim here to an unchecked system of global targeted killings. Mm. The government filed a brief in the case claiming the executive's targeted killing authority is a political question. That should not be subject to judicial review. The government also asserted the state secrets privilege. The lawsuit was filed against CIA Director Leon Panetta, Defense Secretary Robert Gates, President Barack Milhouse Benito Obama, the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia. Attorneys on the case are Jaffer, Ben, who cares? What did the court do? It ducked it. It dismissed the case on procedural grounds without addressing the merits. So could Barack Milhouse Benito Obama and the rest of his comrades have been indicted after they left office? For killing American citizens who they claimed were terrorists? It may well have been, by the way. I'm not defending it. I'm just making a point. I'm making a point about logic and how these things are presented. Could Obama be indicted for killing people overseas who are American citizens who he claims were terrorists? Maybe they were, maybe they weren't. That's a lot of power, ladies and gentlemen. You can hear the left saying it right now. Oh, my God. He must be Hitler. Of course, they only apply that to Barry Goldwater, Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan. 
and Donald Trump. Democrats can't be Hitler. No, no. So the Obama administration claimed absolute power to assassinate American citizens abroad who they claimed were terrorists, terrorist sympathizers, or collateral damage. Collateral damage, because this involved a 16-year-old. Collateral damage. Could Obama be charged with murder? After he leaves office? Why not? Why not? Well, don't ask Judge Florence Pan, a radical leftist on the D.C. Circuit Court. Here's what she had to say in part to President Trump's lawyer, Dean John Sawyer. Cut to Mr. Producer, go. But your position is that he can't be prosecuted for that unless yeah. he's impeached. Yeah. And that was the, as long as it's an official act. I mean, in certain cases, purely private conduct under Clinton against Jones, he'd be subject to prosecution for that as long as he's not in office. Could, but could as long as it's an official act. Could a president order SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival? That's an official act in order to SEAL Team 6? He, he would have to be and would speedily be, you know, uh, uh, impeached and convicted before the criminal process. The answer to me, the better answer is yes, that's one part of it, but, and removed from office. But can he be criminally charged? He would be impeached and removed from office and criminally charged because that's not part of his official duties, calling up SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political opponent. I mean, how ridiculous is this judge? They try to come up with these, these fictions, these concocted examples, these fantasies. They're utterly extreme in order to make their case. Why don't they stick with the facts? But anyway, go ahead. Prosecution, no criminal liability for that. Chief Justice's opinion in Marbury against Madison and uh, uh, and our Constitutional tradition and the plain language of the impeachment judgment clause all clearly presuppose that what the founders were concerned about was not. I asked you a yes, no, yes or no question. Could a president who ordered SEAL Team 6 to assassinate... I love it when judges say that. I asked you a yes or no question. I don't know. You ramble on with your question. So your question was not posed in a way that provides for a yes or no. You're talking about the Constitution of the United States. A case really a first impression as a result of the Obama regime bringing the case in the first place. Constantly bringing up these first impression cases using phony charges like the Klan charges and so forth. And then you have to hear these these judges say that it was yes or no. This isn't a criminal trial. This is an appellate court where you're trying to work through the complexities of the Constitution. And law. I asked you yes or no. Well, if the answer is yes, then Obama could be charged or could have been. Go ahead. He was not impeached. Would he be subject to criminal prosecution? If he were impeached and convicted first. And so, so your answer is, is no. Is, my answer is qualified, yes. There is a political process that would have to occur under our, the structure of our Constitution, which would require impeachment and conviction by the Senate. In these exceptional cases, as the OLC memo itself points out from the Department of Justice, you'd expect a speedy impeachment and conviction. But what and the you founders- know about the OLC documents, 1973 and 2000, because we've discussed them at length during the history of this program. By this program is much, much different. I've discussed them here behind this microphone. I've t- discussed them on The Blaze. I've discussed them on Fox. I waved them around. I've highlighted them. It's been the position of the Department of Justice for more than half a century under Republican and Democrat attorneys general. Under Republican and Democrat presidents said you cannot indict a sitting president because you will decapitate that branch of government. And in effect, you would really have the executive branch decapitating itself. Since the president is the executive branch, and the Department of Justice supposedly reports to him, despite all these talk, oh, it's independent. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but that's irrelevant. So it would indict itself. And when you really think this through logically and rationally, the whole thing is absurd. If a president says you can't indict me, he's the head of the executive branch, then he can't be indicted. Let me repeat that because that will confuse a lot of phony legal scholars, phony professors, and phony pundits with websites. 
The president is the head of the executive branch. Theoretically, he can tell the attorney general, any U.S. attorney, all his appointees, and a special counsel, not particularly special, sorry, drop your charges. You're going to run in front of courts and get an opinion? Excuse me. He's the head of the executive branch. He can tell anybody in any department what to do. None of them are elected. They're all his appointees. And if they're not his appointees, they're part of the vast administrative state. He's in charge of all of it. He's mentioned in the Constitution. There is no Department of Agriculture. There is no Department of Justice. There's no Attorney General. There's no U.S. Attorneys. There's no Federal Criminal Code. There is him. He himself. Him. So if you really want to follow the text of the Constitution... Really want to make an argument that these judges would laugh at because they're so over the edge. Same with these phony professors. A president of the United States would actually have the power, if we were following the Constitution, which they claim to be doing and they're not, to say, all right, drop the case against me. What do you mean? We're going to the Supreme Court to get an answer. I don't care what the Supreme Court says. You report to me. You don't report to the Supreme Court. They have implied judicial review. That's it. Yes, they're in the Constitution. But I'm in charge of you. And I have the power to make executive decisions. Well, the court has said this, the court has said that, but if we were to rewind all the way to the beginning, it wouldn't matter. Okay, now we go forward. You order uh, SEAL Team 6 to assassinate your political rivals. What should happen? And she wants you to use that absurd example... To make constitutional law. To make constitutional law. Seal Team 6 to assassinate your political rivals. What do we do under those circumstances? And I need a yes or no answer. What do you mean you need a yes or no answer? What a kind of an idiotic question is that, Judge? Of course, he can't say that. How about we deal with what's going on today? Today, if you want to make exceptions to post-presidential immunity, that's fine. In cases of murder, okay, if a president orders the murder of a political rival, we'll stipulate. Make an exception for that, but that's not what Trump did. That's what Mark would have said. Go ahead, make your whole list of horribles. But the whole purpose of having a a judiciary to adjudicate complicated matters is not for yes or no answers. As I said, this isn't a trial court. This is a circuit court where you're actually trying to think through the application of the Constitution. You're not ruling on the facts. You're ruling on the Constitution. That is, what does the Constitution say? What was the intention of the framers? So if he orders a hit, by SEAL Team 6 against a political rival. Of course, he would be impeached and removed from office. So the issue of indicting Ms. President would be probably irrelevant. But can you indict him after the fact? Well, go ahead, Judge. You can say, look, this is an area that is relatively clear, but there can be some very extreme cases. And maybe we'll make exceptions for very extreme cases. But this isn't that, despite their best efforts to try and portray it as that. Now, I want to continue with this so you all have a better understanding than anybody else walking on the face of the earth. 